Hello there lovely sword people, Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam and this time we'll have a look at the finals of the Torneo di Spada, Spada Sola or Rapier Tournament. Like I said in the previous videos, the main target is to not get hit. And here we have the first semi-final between Lorenzo and Marcos, who is known for his quick cuts to the leg, which actually Lorenzo finds a very nice strategy against it, that is cutting to his head at the same time. But here he finds in the previous tempo a hand to the hit, so he scores one point and goes up with one unharmed bout. So in the next one, Marcus is a bit more shy and tries to feel out his opponent. Trying to get that opening, trying to go for that leg, but Lorenzo withdraws and cuts to the head at the same time. So that's another three points for Lorenzo and now he's at two unharmed up. So a very steep lead, very hard to get by that because there are only three bouts left in this exchange. So we have the, the next bout and now it goes for Marcus. So he can only afford to double once and the other two he needs to get unharmed. So he needs to be really careful now. So he seeks quite some feeling out here. Marcus trying to wait for an opening in Lorenzo where he can quickly strike and abuse the tempo. But there's not a lot there to go with. Tries to go for the leg snipe, doesn't work, he's out of measure. Lorenzo trying to stomp his way in, trying to persuade Marcus to get into an attack. And there he gets it. Marcus goes forward goes to the body but gets hit in the meantime with a cut to the arm. So both score one point, it's perfect double and we have only two bouts left in this fight. So Lorenzo's tactic going into this fight is pretty obviously baiting out these low attacks while striking simultaneously to the high openings, which he does here again quite nicely, striking to the hand, but it doesn't get counted by the judge, so they count the next exchange, which is just another double. But at this point, Lorenzo is up two unharmed to zero, and it was already the fourth bout, so practically Lorenzo has already won, and his tactic paid off. So, like in these direct comparison fights, so if you're only fighting against one other person and there are multiple exchanges, there's always that incentive. If you have the lead, try to abuse it, try to stay up by all means necessary. It's kind of easier to double than to score a clean hit, so you can use that to your advantage. Marcos scored a final redeeming point, but nevertheless Lorenzo advances to the finals and the next semi-final is me against Corneos which already starts action-packed with a hit to the head of Corneus by me, but uh, Corneus' contact to my hand uh, is counted as a hit as well, which I wouldn't agree with, but then again I'm not really impartial, so I'll have to live with that. And then we go into the next bout, which ends at a bit of wrestling, where we instantaneously agree both uh, verbally that we don't want to get this to the ground because it doesn't matter on which side we fell, we always would fall onto a sword, which is quite unsafe. So in the next bout, Konius uh, does me one better, gets uh, to get a grip on my sword and scores a nice blow to my head. So he scores three points and is the first unharmed. And that strategy worked so well for him, so he goes for it again. He thrusts to my, to my torso, grabs onto my blade, so he's already too unharmed up as well. So that was already the third bout, so I'm in a, quite a bit of trouble again, just like uh, Marcus is in the bout before. So I really have to change up my game. And I do this by, well, by cutting more. I don't want to get, uh, get grabbed again, so 
if my blade's constantly flying around, that would be scored as a hit to the hand anyway, so this could be unharmed for me. But here I get a nice uh, hit to the leg, which scores me in this uh, rule system two points, because it's so difficult to get there. And since it's almost at the feet, I think Manchulino would actually approve here. So you see the danger. If I thrust Cornelius is so quick with his offhand that he tries to grab that, that's super dangerous. And actually that last bout is uh, really fortunate for me because Cornelius' thrust misses my head only by inches to the right while my reverso lands on his upper arm. So I score one point, I score another unharmed. So it's two to two and points actually matter. So the hit to the leg in the previous bout actually won me that fight. So I advanced towards the finals and now it's the third place match between Marcus and Cornelius. And these are fighters which are quite different in their style. So like I said, while Marcus employs quick strikes, especially towards the lower openings, trying to get in there with quick footwork, Cornelius is more about winning that center, engaging that blade and maybe even trapping that opponent's uh, blade while thrusting them into the torso like here. But if that runs into a quick strike, well then both score one point and nobody remains unharmed. So it's a second, second bout of the third place match and we see Cornelius' approach takes ground quite quickly, so they are already at the edge of the fighting ring. But, well, there's a bit of hesitation, I feel, for Cornelius, so his reverso to the hand is out of range, so it gets parried and the repose of Marcus instead lands, so Marcus scores his first point and his first unharmed bout. So there's a bit of pressure now towards Cornelius, but he stays calm and tries to go with his usual approach, which is, I feel, really nice to see. But then again, here he lands the thrust towards the leg, but he isn't able to parry that reverso to his torso, so both score again one point, and Marcos remains in the lead. So with only two bouts left, Cornelius really needs to get his name on the board. But I feel there's still some hesitation. While he manages to gain the center, there's not that, that final tempo, that final commitment that Faber speaks about proceeding with a resolution. So he once again gets uh, drawn out by Marcus, which scores a quick cut to the torso. So now he's actually up in the lead with two unharmed. And there's no way for Cornelius to win that bout anymore and in the final exchange they both against double. I wouldn't know if I would actually have counted that draw cut but in the end it doesn't matter anyway. So for the finals I have a little treat for you. Because it's a tournament about the Spada Sola, the single sword, which actually allowed rapiers and side swords alike, which comes out as everybody uses rapiers of course because of additional hand protection and reach. But here uh, Lorenzo and I agreed both uh, as gentlemen to use side swords, so you'll have finally some hand snipes. So usually my plan with the side sword is to actually provoke the hand quite a bit to make my opponent move, to then abuse that tempo, getting into advantage. And here I'll just make the mistake that my reverso doesn't engage the blade but lands behind it because Lorenzo thrusts forward in the same tempo so we both actually uh, hit each other to the head at the same time. But that doesn't matter, I'll continue to pr provoking towards the hands of my opponent and here I get a nice hit to the hand in and again uh, tempo afterwards another one because the first one doesn't get counted and then I parry the after blow and then uh, basically Lorenzo slips around and the bout's uh, over anyway because I parried the tempo afterwards and score that first point, that first unharmed, which puts me in the lead. So already nice, Lorenzo goes for a high hanging guard, but then as we engage, well, we pretty much see what Manchelino scribes when he says, 
with sharp blades it's pretty much all strata guards. So point forwards, hands low, and here I provoke with the reverso, parry in Wiley Detesta and strike around with uh, Mandrito to the head, which wins me that second unharmed bout and that fight. So I really enjoyed that tournament. Um, I hope you enjoyed that footage as well and hopefully we'll see you in the next one.